Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. We started up in a prior presentation. Remembering we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top to duplicate. Right clicking the tab up top again to duplicate again. Back to the tab to the middle. Reports on the left hand side. We want to open up the balance sheet as that's thinking tab to the right reports on the left. This time the profit and loss closing the hand boogie changing the range. We want to go from 010125 to 06325. I want to see it on a month by month side by side for the month by month and run it. That's what we have thus far tapping to the left. We're going to close the hand boogie changing the range in. 010125 to 06325 and let's see this by a classes breaking out a lot of we want a classy report a lot of class happening here okay then we're going to go to the first tab we're going to then go down to the projects on the left hand side and let's go into the projects so we're within the projects so let's recap what we've done thus far in our excel worksheet because it's a little bit easier to tell the story so we started with an estimate we gave out the estimate total of the estimate was a 100,000 when the job was accepted we wanted a $10,000 down payment so we didn't record revenue but build the client for the 10,000 and then we recorded expenses for the month of operation that actually started on month two uh, and these were our actual expenses that we recorded we recorded expenses for month number three and we recorded the related revenue not not in alignment with our billing structure but rather in alignment with the percentage completion concept that we we did with this calculation here and then on month number three we did the same thing we we basically calculated our actual expenses and then we had this percentage of completion and now we want to be calculating or recording the revenue so let's just recap by the way i i did not record this last bit in our excel worksheet although we did do it in quickbooks so we'll record that here now when we did the work here and we'll record that on i'm going to say 331 and it's going to be cost of goods sold for all the stuff that we did material labor overhead i'm going to put in a cost of goods sold for the 19 total 19527 the other side let's add some more blue space i'm going to need some more blue spaces and let's say let's just add one more for now to to and then we'll add some more after 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 okay and then the other side's going to uh cost of goods sold we just paid cash cash went out the door for it to get it done all right and then if i record that over here I'm just going to say cost of goods sold is right here. I'm going to say F2 plus F2, F2. And that's going to be 19,527. And then the checking F2 plus F2. And there we go. And so now we're back in balance. And notice here, when I do this in like a little worksheet format, we, we can only see this. We, don't, we can't break it out by month. So that's why in, a, in in QuickBooks, it's nice that we have this revenue that can be broken out over here uh, on a month by month. So we kind of add a dimension in like the database program, the total still coming out to the 16, uh, 15, 621 for that time frame that we could see in our little worksheet, 15, but it gives us some more dimensions in QuickBooks, although it adds complexity to do so because we have to deal with these forms and whatnot in order to calculate these journal entries all right so now we're going to recognize the revenue so i recorded this on our side if i go to this first tab and we look at these the costs for example we can go into the costs of goods sold and we had these expenses that we entered and when i entered this expense item i made it billable now when i say billable and i did a 30 percent markup we're not going to actually give the bill to the client because we're billing the client based on our billing structure here that we came up with 
uh, that we came up with in accordance with our estimate. So, but we are gonna make it billable so that we can then record the revenue with an invoice because the invoice is typically the form used to record revenue. <laughs> so now we're gonna pull this into an invoice, not so we can give it to the client, but so we can record the revenue in our QuickBooks system. So let's go back to our projects, project number two, close the ham buggy. And then I'm gonna say, we're just gonna make an invoice. And the invoice is not gonna come from the estimate because that's what I'm using when I actually want to give the invoice to the client, but rather I'm gonna pull in these billable items, which is gonna help me to calculate the actual revenue on a percentage of completion kind of concept. So if I go through this thing here and say, okay, that's good. And this is gonna happen on, we'll say 331, okay. And so now it pulled in the materials, labor and overhead and put it into, and then it did the markup over here. And so that looks good. Now the invoice is typically going to be increasing the accounts receivable and the other side is gonna be assigned by these line items revenue. For our purposes, what do we want to have happen? We want the revenue to be going up, but we want the other side to go to work in process. So if I see that on this side, on, an, on our Excel sheet, we're, we're gonna, let's do this on our Excel sheet. So I had my 19,527. The percent completion is that divided by my total estimated cost, not including the markup that I'm gonna say here. And then we're gonna say, if I multiply that percent times the total revenue, then the revenue that I should be recognizing related to that cost should be 25,385. So if I was to do a journal entry down here, let's add a little bit more blue so I can do it. And then I'll, we'll make another area to enter because I'm getting too far down, but one more, one more transactions down here. Just one more, 331. We're gonna say, I'm gonna put the revenue on top, even though it's a credit, because that's the first thing I, I think about, right? So I'm gonna say the revenue is a credit of that 19, of not 19, of the 25, uh, 385. And then the other side, I don't want it going to, to accounts receivable, but rather work in process, which is easy to do from a journal entry standpoint, but we have to do a little bit more finagling, a little bit more uh, finessing on the QuickBooks side if I want to use an invoice instead of a journal entry, which I do. And so that's what we will do. So we'll, let's go back up top and record this. I'm going to go into the revenue, say F2 plus F2 and go down 25, 385. And the other side was going to work in process, the WIP account, F2 plus F2 and work in process. Boom. So that puts us uh, back in balance here. That's what we'd want to do. 